In the last lecture, we talked about mathematical modeling of uh, mechanical systems with gears. Uh, and in today's lecture, we shall take a few examples to practice the concept. Uh, here is a schematic diagram of a mechanical system and we want to obtain a mathematical model for this particular system. The system consists of an inertial element. This is connected uh, to these two elements through these uh, gear systems. Uh, the other end of this uh, inertial element is connected uh, through a spring with a fixed structure. Likewise, this end of this inertial element is connected through a damper uh, with a, a fixed uh, structure. Here, uh, a torque T is applied, uh, which produces an angular displacement in this shaft. So, let's call this angular displacement as theta 1 of T. Uh, some students uh, are confused that uh, how this uh, structure can rotate uh, because they feel a difficulty to visualize this schematic diagram. Actually, this spring over here, that is a rotational spring and uh, we have already talked about rotational springs in one of our previous lectures. Uh, that rotational spring and both of them are represented by the same symbol. However, this uh, spring over here is rotational spring and one end of rotational spring that is uh, fixed uh, and cannot move and the other end of this rotational spring is connected with uh, this shaft and uh, has an angular displacement theta 1 of t. The angular displacement of this shaft uh, is theta 2 of t. This theta 2 is different from this angular displacement uh, theta 1. However, the two angular displacements are not linearly independent. They, these are related to each other by uh, uh, this uh, t threshold. To obtain a mathematical model for this mechanical system, uh, the easiest approach is to reflect all the impedances to this side of the shaft. Uh, so, we know how to reflect the impedances to other side of the shaft. Uh, if, for example, we reflect this impedance uh, to this side of the shaft, uh, we have to multiply this uh, impedance with the square of the t ratio. So, here is uh, the equivalent mechanical diagram with uh, all impedances referred to uh, this uh, side of the shaft. Uh, in referring uh, these impedances to uh, the other side of the shaft, we have to multiply these impedances with square of the t ratio. That is, uh, this impedance uh, over here, it is 100, it must be multiplied with uh, 5 divided by 25 uh, whole square. That is number of teeth on the destination shaft divided by number of teeth on the source shaft and uh, then square of this ratio. Similarly, uh, these impedances must be multiplied by square of the teeth ratio. The teeth ratio for uh, this uh, gear that is 5 over 25 and for this gear it is 5 over 50 so this impedance 150 is multiplied with square of 5 over 50 likewise this is multiplied by square of t ratio once we have this uh, equivalent mechanical diagram uh, we can easily write a uh, mathematical model for this mechanical system here this angular displacement is theta 1 of t and uh, since we have assumed this uh, structure to be a rigid uh, structure, therefore, this end of this inertial element that also has the same displacement as this end of this inertial element. Therefore, this uh, angular displacement is also theta 1 of t. Furthermore, uh, this structure is also a rigid structure. Therefore, uh, if this end has angular displacement theta 1 of t, this will also have an angular displacement theta 1 of t. Likewise, this one also has angular displacement theta 1 of t. That is, all these impedances are connected with uh, this angular displacement uh, theta 1 of t. Hence, uh, the mathematical model is uh, given by this expression theta 1 of s multiplied by sum of impedances which are connected with this angular displacement and that must be equal to sum of the torques which are applied to this displacement. Uh, since all these impedances are connected with uh, this angular displacement theta 1, uh, therefore all these impedances must appear, appear over here. 
so this is a mathematical model for this mechanical system and the transfer function between theta 1 and t that is given by this relation by bringing uh, this term to the right hand side and bringing uh, t of s to the left hand side this is transfer function between theta 1 and t uh, we are interested in obtaining a transfer function between theta 2 and t so we know the relation between theta 2 and theta 1 the two are related by t ratio that is n1 theta 1 that is equal to n2 theta 2 which means that theta 1 of s that is equal to 10 times theta 2 of s so if we substitute this theta 1 uh, over here then uh, we have uh, the transfer function uh, between this angular displacement theta 2 and the applied torque t uh, our next example is uh, the mechanical system which is uh, shown by this uh, schematic diagram here a torque uh, t is applied to this shaft which produces an angular displacement theta 1 of t and then uh, this shaft uh, is connected uh, through a, a gear with uh, this arrangement and then uh, this shaft is connected to another gear with this uh, arrangement here uh, the uh, gears are not ideal gears rather they have some uh, moment of inertia uh, for example this pulley has a uh, moment of inertia j1 and this one has a moment of inertia uh, j2 likewise uh, this uh, pulley has moment of inertia j3 and this pulley has moment of inertia J4. Uh, we want to obtain mathematical models for this mechanical system. Uh, again, uh, we shall refer all the impedances uh, to uh, this uh, side of the uh, this gear system. Uh, so we do it uh, stepwise. Uh, first, we uh, refer these impedances uh, from this uh, side of uh, the gear to this side of the gear. So this can be done by multiplying these impedances with square of the teeth ratio so everything uh, over here is the same this j of a is over here uh, this uh, gear system is over here and then this uh, spring damper over here and now these elements are referred to this side of the shaft here this pulley is not an ideal pulley or rather it has an inertia j3 which is indicated over here uh, likewise, uh, this pulley uh, has moment of inertia J4 and when it is referred to this uh, side of the gear, it has to be multiplied by uh, square of the teeth ratio. So here we have J4 multiplied by square of the teeth ratio. Uh, number of teeth on the destination shaft divided by number of teeth on the source shaft and whole square. Likewise, uh, these uh, two elements are multiplied by square of the teeth ratio. Now the question is why we have not multiplied it by square of the teeth ratio? Because this moment of inertia is not on the other side of the uh, gear, rather it is on the same uh, side of uh, this uh, shaft. So it must not be multiplied by uh, the square of the teeth ratio. In the next step, we shall refer all these impedances from this uh, side of the gear to this side of the gear and in doing so uh, we have to multiply all these impedances by square of the teeth ratio so uh, all the impedances refer to uh, this side of the shaft so this inertial element is uh, shown over here as it is and then uh, moment of inertia of this pulley is j1 so that is written over here moment of inertia of this uh, pulley this one is j2 and when it is referred to this side of the gear it has to be multiplied by square of the teeth ratio so j2 multiplied by uh, square of the teeth ratio number of teeth on destination shaft divided by number of teeth on the source shaft whole squat uh, likewise the spring damper and all these elements these have to be multiplied by square of the teeth ratio which are written over here uh, this uh, spring multiplied by square of teeth ratio, this B multiplied by square of teeth ratio, J3 multiplied by square of teeth ratio. And likewise, 
these uh, things multiplied by square of t threshold. Uh, J4 multiplied by N3 by N4 whole square and this whole thing must be multiplied by N1 by N2 square. So here we have uh, equivalent mechanical diagram for this mechanical uh, arrangement. Uh, once we have this uh, equivalent mechanical diagram then we can easily obtain mathematical model for this mechanical system. This is done on the next slide. Here uh, the same uh, mechanical uh, diagram is shown. This angular displacement is theta 1 of t. Uh, what is this angular displacement? It is the same as this one because this element is rigid. Likewise, this angular displacement that is also the same as this theta 1. And this is also theta 1. What is angular displacement of this end? Uh, the two sides of spring can have different angular displacements. So this is theta 1. And let's call this angular displacement as theta 2 of t. Uh, furthermore, uh, here is a damper and this end of damper can have angular displacement different from this one. So let's call it uh, theta 2 of, uh, sorry, theta 3 of t. Uh, so what is this angular displacement? The same as this one. Likewise, this angular displacement is the same as this one. This angular displacement is the same as this one. So we have a three linearly independent angular displacements and we apply the shortcut to obtain the mathematical model for this mechanical system. Theta 1 of s multiplied by sum of the impedances which are connected to this displacement. So Ja that is connected to uh, theta 1, J1 is also connected to theta 1. This J2 uh, multiplied by N1 by N2 square that is also connected to uh, this angular displacement theta 1. So these uh, things multiplied by S square uh, plus this, uh, this mechanical impedance that is also connected to this uh, angular displacement theta 1. Here uh, this uh, square is missing uh, square of this uh, teeth ratio. Please make this correction. Theta 1 multiplied by sum of impedances which are connected with theta 1 minus theta 2 multiplied by sum of impedances which are connected to both theta 2 and theta 1. So this impedance is connected to both the angular displacement theta 1 this end and theta 2 this end. So uh, this impedance is over here minus theta 3 of s multiplied by sum of impedances which are connected to both theta 3 and theta 1. There is no impedance which is connected to both theta 1 and theta, uh, uh, theta 3. Therefore, we have zero term uh, over here. And this is equal to sum of applied torques which are directly applied to this angular displacement. Uh, the next equation uh, over here minus theta 1 of s multiplied by sum of impedances which are common between theta 1 and theta 2. So this impedance is common between theta 1 and theta 2 that is written over here. Again this square is missing. Uh, theta 2 of s multiplied by sum of impedances which are connected with theta 2. So here we can see that this impedance is connected with theta 2 and uh, this impedance is also connected with theta 2. So these two impedances are appearing over here. Minus theta 3 uh, multiplied by sum of impedances which are common between theta 2 and theta 3. So this is the impedance which is common between theta 2 and three, theta 3. One end of this impedance has angular displacement theta 2. The other end has angular displacement theta 3. Uh, similarly, for third equation, theta 1 multiplied by sum of impedances common between theta 1 and uh, theta 3. Uh, theta 2 multiplied by sum of impedances common between uh, theta 2 and theta 3. This impedance is common between theta 2 and theta 3. One end has uh, angular displacement theta 2, the other end has angular displacement theta 3. Uh, plus uh, theta 3 multiplied by sum of impedances connected with theta 3. So all these impedances, uh, this one, 
this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. All these impedances are connected with uh, theta 3, uh, which are written over here. So, these three equations describe the mathematical model for the mechanical system uh, that is there on previous slide.